What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Matches Malone. And today is my three week anniversary. <laughs> so, three weeks of MTG Malone. I'm at over 110 followers. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. And because I'm so grateful, today there will be no shameless plug to subscribe to my channel. So, Let's get right into the deck. Today we are playing Golgari Devotion. I love Golgari since the first day I was playing Magic. Yes, there are some color combinations that are real dear to my heart, like Demir or Is it? But Golgari, zombies, green zombies, just plant zombies, I don't know. It just gets me right here. You can't see it, right here in my heart. Yes, yes, gets me right there. This is a Golgari Devotion deck. I wanted to try out something fancy. And I'm coming to you from the past. I already played this deck before I'm making this video. This time because um, I needed to try it out. I wanted to see. And if it was utter garbage, I would have made another deck. But this deck is freaking amazing. I mean... Yeah, I was playtesting it in unranked first, but I will get into some ranked matches, so if you want to get into those, just check check out the uh, time codes, and uh, I will put a time code in there. And um, yeah, let me tell you something. If this deck with this combo pops, there is no chance for your opponent. They can do nothing. But let's get into it. You all know good old Gary here. The Grey Merchant of Asphodel. When he enters the battlefield, you get X life and your opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. So if he's all alone on the field, you put him out. You see, he has two black devotion himself. So you will get to life, you will lose to life, but who wants that? Who wants that? You want to have him real big, real strong, get in for a snack and kill your opponent. In one turn, maybe. Who knows? It is possible. It is possible. So. But, yeah. Okay, Black Devotion deck. Seen it. But have you ever seen a Golgari Black Devotion deck? So, this Golgari Devotion deck uses the Fiend Artisan to get our Gary out. The Fiend Artisan is a 1 1 for 2. Not too bad, not too bad, but with his hybrid colors, you can play him for whatever land you are drawn. So if you have two black out, you can play him. If you have two green out or a green and a black, no matter what, you can play him. Then he gets plus one plus one for each creature in your graveyard, which is pretty, pretty good against those freaking mill decks that are running around. Yes, I love mill myself. I made a fun mill deck, the Yorian mill deck. Link will be up there. So. I made it, was good, was good, It ha I had fun, I had fun with it, but it isn't fun when you're playing up against it, because you don't want your mom to throw away all your stuff right in front of you, so you aren't playing with that anymore, okay, get it out of your room, I will toss it out. So, Fiend Artisan gets plus one plus one for each creature in your graveyard, which is pretty good itself, but as soon as he is ready, so if he survives one turn, which we hope he will. You can sack a creature on your on your field, of course, one of your creatures, you can sack it. You pay green or a black, so a hybrid colors here again, and X. And you can search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. I don't know why they put the less part in, because why would you pay five if you're only getting a three, co a three cost creature? Makes no sense. Then you put it onto the battlefield, shuffle the library. You can do this only as a sorcery, so you can't surprise your enemies with that, but that is okay because otherwise would be freaking unfair. So what are we sacking? We're sacking the Maya Triton, and we're doing this because we want to fill our graveyard. And we have the Serrated Scorpion, if he dies, deals 2 damage, you get 2 life, which is also pretty nice in this Blackburn style of deck. So, my Triton also gives you two life and has death touch, so it is a real nice blocker. I mean, look at all those dead fish just swimming there. 
terrible, terrible. So use the Fiend Artson for a totally of six ma total of six mana. Sack your Scorpion. Get a Gary on the field. Yes, and that is already six damage, just like that. If you have more creatures out, that is even more damage. Then we have Loris, so we can get back our creatures that we just sacked, like the Mire Triton or the Serrated Scorpion. Loris in here, not a companion, even though this freaking commander thing here just won't disappear. I don't know what's wrong with that. It gets on my nerves. My OCD is getting crazy. So, Loris gets you back your Serrated Scorpion on the field, so you can sack it again with the Fiend Artson and get another Grey Merchant. Also, you can sack the Scorpion and get yourself Loris. And so the train just keeps on rolling. Train just keeps on rolling. You get a uh, Serrated Scorpion, a Maya Triton back on the field. And then, when your graveyard is full, you get your Nissa out. So you have seen her in my uh, Golgari Buck deck, the Buck Cemetery. And um, she's pretty nice. Whenever land enters the battlefield, you put a loyalty counter on her, which is pretty good. Then uh, you can untap a land, gets menace, and haste, snacks in. It is still a land, but it snacks in. So if the, the enemy can destroy it, well, what you want to do, lost the land, but you have a nice Nisa out. And her minus 5, which you can trigger. If you play her in turn 5, you get out a land afterwards. Landfall triggers. She's on 5, loyalty immediately. And uh, then you may put a creature card with converted mana cost less or equal to the number of lands you control onto the battlefield. So, oh yeah, and you put two 1-1 one, one counters on it. So you put her out on 5. You have a Grey Merchant in your graveyard because you Maya Tritoned. You get it out. You get it out. Easy as that. Easy as that. Oh, I was on the wrong card here. Here she is. Or you get your feet artisan out. Or you get whatever out of your graveyard. Whatever you want. I mean, this is Golgari. Get it out of your graveyard. Then we have the Polukranos Unchained. I am never able to pronounce this card right. So he's a 6-6, six, six, which is pretty good. Which is pretty good. And you can make him fight. And whenever damage would be dealt, dealt to him, you just remove some counters. And then you can exile six other cards from your graveyard and make him come back as a 12-12. Yes, you heard it here first, a 12-12, which is freaking amazing. And all of these cards also have Black Devotion. But we have some more in here. We have some removal with the Blood Chief's Thirst. Useful, has to be in here. Those rogues, those crabs, get them out. And a Heartless Act. It's just a little bit better than a Blood Chief's Thirst because it's an instant and you can destroy a creature or remove counters from a creature. So even if you have that uh, artifact snack out there, just remove her counters and it's gone. And it is gone. Then we have some card draw with the village rights. Sack your serrated scorpion, get to life for your troubles, draw into a grey merchant and you are golden. Another card that I really want to make work because when I encounter it, it always gets on my nerves, is the Inscription of Ruin. I won't be kicking it, it's too freaking expensive, but it does everything we need in this deck. Either an opponent discards two cards, which is pretty nice because we don't like opponents having cards, we're evil. Um, or you can return a creature card with convert mana cost two or less from a graveyard to the battlefield, which is the Fiend Artisan. And you can destroy a creature. Sorcery speed for three? Yes. Mana cost three or less? Yes. So the third part isn't really strong, but the first two are pretty good. And if you ever come in that luxurious situation that you have seven mana open in your turn and have nothing to do, just do them all three. It is fun. It is so much fun. Then we also have a three Call of the Death Dwellers in here. Gets us back all our important combo cards. Our Luris, our Fiend Artson, our Triton and our Scorpion. Those are cards that we want back on the field. And uh, yeah, also puts a Death Catch counter and a Menace counter on them. So if your graveyard is filled with creatures and you have your Fiend Artson out and he's like a 6-6 six, six or something, put a Menace counter on him and a Death Touch counter. If he gets blocked by two creatures, those are both gone. Those are both gone. So. What is the dream? The dream is to sack your scorpion 
for 6 mana, get a Grey Merchant out and drain him for a lot of life. Have your Lurus out so you can do it all over again during your turn. Landwise, we have 11 swamps and 5 forests and 3 Temple of Milady. Yes, Milady Nisa. And uh, there aren't any uh, better lands to put in here. You can put in the, um, yeah, the Thryomes, but what for? Temple is good. You can scry. If you're up against rogues, you can decide whatever you want to get rid of. Also, we have the Bala Get Recovery. Is also land and returns a, cre a card, whatever you want, to your hand. And we have three Agadim the Undercrypt, aka Agadim's Awakening. You can return creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield with that. Each has to be different mana cost, but that is fine. You get your Luris, you get your Field Artsen and a Scorpion. And if you have eight mana open, which I don't think, because this is a real fast meta, you get a Grey Merchant. This combo is amazing. I pulled it off. I won't tell you in which game, but I pulled it off. So. As I said, some unranked games first to check out the deck and then we went straight into ranked and had ourselves a little fun against those mill decks. So check the deck out and uh, yeah, I will see you in the games. Okay, you know the rules with those janky decks. We tried them out in unranked. So the dog is here with me. How are you doing doggo? How are you doing? You want to cuddle? You want to cuddle? Oh yeah! Doggo brings me luck. Doggo brings me luck. Oh yeah! Isn't he a good dog? Isn't he a good dog? Oh, this hand looks perfect. We got our feet artisan, we got our Nissan hand, we got a serrated scorpion. You want down again? You want down again? Okay, you go down. So. Need to let the doggo out real quick. Get out of here. Oh, so you had a nice view on my chair. We get our Scorpion out. Together with the Fiend Artisan, that is a real nice combo. He's rocking the bird sleeves. Those are real nice. Those are real freaking beautiful. So he plays out an island. Are we up against rogues? Are we up against rogues? Well, if we are, we can see... Oh no, we aren't. Blue-white control. Blue-white control. So we get in here for a little snack with our scorpion. And try to get our feed artisan on the field. If he holds a counter for that, we can bring him back with the inscription of ruin next turn. He has Nomen of the Sea. Nothing to be worried about here. So next turn I will make him discard. Well, depends on what he plays. He keeps on top. I don't like that. I absolutely don't like that. So the Fiend Artisan, as I said, is really good against rogues. He has a glass casket. And takes care of the Artisan. That is fine with me. Because I will make him discard two of his cards. There you go. Discard those. Discard your cards. And I will get in for some little damage here. So, he discarded the land even. The next turn we can try to get our Nissa out. He is an Arkan. Well, good thing that we have our Heartless Acts. And we can even keep one of those. Or whatever he brings out next. And if we draw land, that would be freaking sweet. He does nothing. So. Are we trying to bring our Nissa out here? I think we attack first. He holds priority. Could mean anything. Could be the omen. Could be whatever. Could be whatever. Do you play counter spells? Well, let's find out. Let's find out if you are playing counter spells.
He bottoms too. That is very nice to see. Almond, nice to see. Two plus one. Decline. No need to. No need to. We could have brought out the scorpion here. That was a little misplay on my on my part. So uh, yeah, happens. It happens to the best. Another glass casket. Another glass casket. Do we have anything in our graveyard? No, we don't. No, we don't. So bring this out tapped. Get out another scorpion. The essence scatter. Well, now we would have had something in our graveyard. Let's attack here for three and keep our heartless act open. The next turn we can bring out the Gary for a little damage. And if he kills it, we can just bring it back for some more damage. I mean, it's just slow burning. Another scorpion here. Very nice. I like to see that. I absolutely like to see that. He has another essence scatter. Well. Well. You do you, opponent. You do you. We take action here. Get in for three. Come to my aid. Or should we get our Gary out now? I think we get our Gary out here. And if he kills this, we can just bring it back. Bring him back to do more. More of this snack in your face. So this is just three damage. Not the kill you want, but it is three damage. And three damage is worth something. And he surrenders. And he surrenders. So unranked, this can work out. This can work out. Very nice. Okay, let's give it one more uh, test right here. And uh, if we are able to win one more, you know the rules. We're up against Yapari Gamesuki. With the rogues. With the rogues. This hand looks... Meh. Looks meh. Nothing to sacrifice. We mulligan this. This hand looks better. This hand looks way better. We keep this and uh, we get rid of our inscription because I don't think it will be of much worth here. Get our Temple of Milady. My Triton. Very nice. Very nice. I like that. So are we up against rogues in unranked? And if we are, this is perfect. So here's the Ruin Crab. We're up against rogues. We are up against rogues. Do I play this out now? I think I do. I need lands. I need lands in my hand. Let's see what he mills us here. If he has an untapped land and he mills us something good in our graveyard, we can call off the Death Dweller it immediately. Empty our graveyard so he doesn't even have fun with our graveyard. So, we are up against rogues and unranked, that is perfect. That is perfect. So, he has an untapped land. He has a untapped land. I like to see that. I like to see that. Can't counter us. There's a Gary in our graveyard. And there is a Gary in our hand. So, what did we get here? Just the Meyer Triton. Just the Meyer Triton. But I think I will get it. I think I will get it. So it has death touch and manas. Can't be blocked unless they want their creatures to die. Yeah, there was no reason to attack in here, but why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? So we get milled even more. That is okay. That is part of our plan. Getting milled. Getting milled. So we snack in here. He has a Soaring Thought Thief. Do you want to block the Mire Triton here? Do you really want to block it? Well, that's two damage to your face. And we get two more Mire Tritons out. Those are real nice. 
And if we can get our Gary out next turn, well, that is 5 damage for you, sir. So, we didn't mill our Nissa here, which is pretty good. Which is pretty, pretty good. He didn't mill our Nisa either. But he milled our Garys. No Nisa milled. Very nice, very nice. So we just need one more land here. He gets the Wind Robber out. As a blocker. We attack in. We attack in. It's not a Soaring Thought Thief. Blocks one of those. And blocks the other one. Okay. Okay. Those are gone. Those are gone. Which means he probably has the Call of the Death Dweller in hand. Because otherwise he wouldn't have blocked those. Will he use it now? Is your uh, Call of the Death Dweller coming now? It is not. Oh, a land. I don't like to see that. I don't like to see that. And he mills us some more. Oh, one Nisa down. One Nisa down. That is bad. But if we draw land here, we still have a chance. We still have a chance. So, we attack in. With the Mire Triton. Can't be blocked. Two damage. We hope he doesn't have a counter spell. But he... He will have. Or he has into the story. He has a counter spell. So our hand is empty. He probably has the into the story in hand. Mills us some more. We are at 24 here. The inscription gun also not too good. But uh, if he can't kill the and here's the into the story. Just as I said. So there will be another land. He will mill us for some more. This deck is just freaking obnoxious. Oh, okay. Okay. So, what are the chances that we draw something that we need? Apocorus. Very good. Very, very good. <coughs> very good. He needs to spend a lot of mana to uh, kill this. Because it has counters on it. Mills us for some more. So his plan is still milling us. His plan is still milling us. Yep, and it goes real good. So I will take care of this crab. This costs six. We have five. So we need one more. Always get you with the Lull Mage's Domination. Always get you with the Lull Mage's Domination. Well, yes. As I said, this is rogues. This is rogues. Doesn't get better than this. But we have our another Perkara, so that is nice. Ours is bigger. Ours is bigger. He gets his lures in hand. And plays it out. So it means he doesn't have a counter spell. Means he doesn't have a counter spell. So we still have a chance here. If we can get the Polkaros on field, Polakranos. So we get rid of everything that we don't like. Oh, we like that. We like that. So ours is bigger. Do you have another Law Mage domination in hand? Do you, enemy? You will draw a card here. He will draw a card here. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. But he is on 8 lands. We are on 4 cards. Yeah, he mills us now. We are dead. So, is this good against rogues? It could be. It could be. If they don't draw the darn Lalmage Domination, we would have a little chance here. We would have a little chance here. But we didn't. We didn't. So, good game. Good game. Lost against rogues? Not a shame. Not a shame. To lose against rogues is perfectly fine. We don't mind that. 
we don't mind losing against rogues in unranked. I mean, was the perfect test. Was the perfect test. Carmen Sita, 22. We have another Lurus here. Can we get our revenge? This hand looks okay. If we draw into another land, our spells aren't so expensive here. So we keep this. A two lander. Yes, we keep a two lander. We do it. We do it. And we're up against another rogue stack. Up against another rogue stack. So pay three life here, get our scorpion out, and next turn we will instantly kill that ruin crab. Oh my gosh. People just don't care. People just don't care. Just playing the ruin and another ruin crab for our troubles. Another ruin crab for our troubles. Yep. That's nice. But we got a call of the Death Dweller, so we will de destroy one here instantly. And the next one we can destroy with the Inscription of Ruin. And then with our Call of the Death Dweller we can get some stuff back. Mills us for another tree here, but that is fine, because it's better than milling us for more. Gets the Thief's Guild Enforcer. You can have that. And a Wind Robber. And a Wind Robber. So we have a lot of stuff in our graveyard now. I think it is time to call upon the Death Dweller. I think it is time to call upon the Death Dweller. Put a Death Touch counter on the Fiend Artisan and a Menace counter. No need to get in here. No need to get in. Of course he has the Blood Chief's Thirst immediately, but if he attacks in with the Thief's Guild Enforcer, I can block that with my two Scorpions and get back something. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, that is an opening. That is an opening. Let him discard those two. There's nothing you can really do about it. Those are gone. Those are gone. That was an opening I needed to take. That was an opening I absolutely needed to take. So he mills us for another three, but we get our Pula Kranos. Pula Kranos. So. We still have a small chance here. Temple of Melody. Very nice. I take those. And the village rides. Yeah, I will keep those on top, even though I know I will never see him. Get our Fiend Artisan out. He's real big now. He's real big now. So can we draw another land? One land, two lands gone. Two lands gone. But here is an Heartless Act. That is very nice. That is indeed very nice. Yeah, I will use it now. Destroy the Thief's Guild Enforcer. Make our Fiend Artisan even a little bigger here. Hopefully. Hopefully we make him bigger. Nope, we didn't make him bigger. And uh, we attack in with everything. He can block those serrated scorpions. Oh, okay. Are you really willing to sacrifice your crab? No, you're not. Okay, smacking in for big damage here. He sacks. So, can we get our revenge against the rogues? Can we get our revenge against the rogues? Did he draw a kill spell for a feed artisan or a lull mage stop? Yep. Yep. Lull mage domination. As predicted. As predicted. 
So we need another land for our Polacranos. Lalmage domination as predicted. Just the top deck of the century. The top deck of the century. Here comes a Thieves Guild Enforcer. Our Gary's down. Our Gary is down. So yeah, you need to sack something with this. So you can't really do anything. He attacks in. Well, we need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of this, absolutely. As Death Touch, our Maya Triton. He loses two life, we get two life. That is what we want. So I will draw here. I will absolutely draw here. And hopefully we draw something good. Another Feed Artisan. Well, we get that on the field. What are the chances that he will draw another Brickett Lulmage Domination on his top deck? And did he? No, he did not. No, he did not. That is perfect. So, we get our Nisa out here. And the land. And he surrenders. Got our revenge against Rogues. Take that, Rogues. Take that. Go, Gari, baby. Go, Gari, baby. I know this is cheeky, but uh, we got two wins. One against Rogues. We won a game against Rogues. Maybe it was luck. Who knows? But we're up against the Golgari Queen herself. Okay. With our Golgari deck. So. Opponent goes first. This hand looks terrible. We need to mulligan this. This hand looks better. This hand looks way better. But what do we get rid of? What do we get rid of? I think we get rid of the Luris because uh, with the Call of the Death Dweller we can get back these two anyways. Are we up against rogues one more time? Yes, we are. We are, baby. We are up against rogues. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I would have. I would have thought. Mills us immediately. Two kill spells down. Two kill spells down. Is this mono blue? Oh, this is mono blue mill. Okay. So we kind of have a chance. We kind of have a chance. Seven cards down in the second turn. Seven cards down in the second turn. But we have a Call of the Death Dweller here. And we have the Blood Chief's Thirst. I will let him mill me one more time here. No need to attack and then I will get rid of the Ruin Crab. But what do we have in here? A Gary? Okay. Our Fiend Artisan is getting big and strong. And gets even bigger and stronger. Gets even bigger and stronger. So we attack in here first. Let's see how he takes these. What's in our graveyard? Serrated Scorpion and another Feed Artisan. Do we get those back? If you return this to my hand, I'm not worried about that. Okay, so I can kill your Ruin Crab now without any worries about counter spells. Oh, almost clicked the wrong one. And uh, get the Fiend Artisan back immediately. And next turn, I can call off the Death Dweller and get a Fiend Artisan with a nice counter on it. With a nice counter on it. I will Temple here. Village Rites. 
Hopefully it doesn't mill that. It's a nice card. It is a nice card. So, do you have another Brazen Borrower for this? He does. He does have another Brazen Oh, he does not. He does not. But I think he wants to get it out. So we get out a Feet Artisan and a Serrated Scorpion. Do you have a counter for that? And even if you do, I and he surrenders against Agromill. We did it. We did it. Okay. Okay. Well, in ranked. Very nice. Very nice. Our first game in ranked went really well. Now we're up against, well, he is rogues. I can tell you right now, if he's this high ranked, he's some kind of rogues. We don't have any green here, but do we really need it right now? I don't think so. We have the Heartless Act. We have a Village Rides. The opponent goes first with his real nice leaves here. It's a Fabled Passage. Cracks it immediately. Impatient. Doesn't want to wait. Doesn't want to wait. Oh, it's a forest. It is a forest. Okay. Okay, so he's playing Golgari himself, I reckon. Otherwise, what else is there? Oh, nope, nope, no Golgari. He's playing Gruul. He is playing Gruul. So, are we taking care of that immediately? I think we can get our Maya Triton out here. And uh, tag in for one. No reason not to. The Maya Triton is real nice. And I think the Heartless Act is still something that we can keep. Gets a Lovestruck Beast out. So what are we taking care of? What are we taking care of? I think... The Love Struck Beast here is something that we absolutely don't want to see. And uh, we hold back for now. We have a blocker with the Bio Triton, which is nice. We have the Serrated Scorpion to block, which is also pretty good. Well, still we have our blocker. Still we have our blocker with the Maya Triton. So, I will draw here and gain us little life back. The recovery is real nice. But I need a green land, so I will play it as a green land. Get my Fiend Artisan out. And we still have our village rights. Our village peoples here. And Apocorus is bigger than his armored killer here. Good old Godzilla creature. Apollo Kranos. Always say that wrong. Always say that wrong. The Great Hand. The greatest of them all. Still no attacks. That is perfect for me. So I can get my Polo Kratos out. I can just get him out. And uh, attack in with the Maya Triton. He blocks it. Well, let's draw some cards then. Make our Fiend Artisan a little bigger. And we get another Polo Kratos. That is nice. That is nice. So next turn we can fight the Armored Killer here. Let's see what he has. He has something big. He has something real big. But how big is it? How big is whatever you have? We have the Agadim's Awakening so we can get some creatures back. No worries here. Okay, he doesn't have something big. Or do you? Or do you? Shutter Skull Smashing. Okay. 
Well, we will fight with the Pulokranos here. Oh, he has protection from multicolored. Why didn't he attack in? Well, in that case, let's get back some creatures. What do we have in here? A two cost? Yeah. But do we have a one cost in here? Yeah, the scorpion. Perfect. Okay. So we get the scorpion and the feed artisan back. We tag in. Oh yeah, right, okay. But we have another one. So it's a brush fire elemental. But do you have another land for that? Do you have another land for that? Shouldn't have attacked in with the Polychronos, but uh, couldn't do nothing anyways. Another Gem Razor. Yeah, that's his name. I was wondering, what was his name again? It's Gem Razor. It is Gem Razor. So we don't block here. Get our Pulokranos out. Or do we? We get our big Pulokranos out. All those cards. No, the Nissa can stay. Maybe we can use her later. Maybe we can use her later. So our Pulokranos is nice and big here. He really needs to think about what he wants to do. Gets another innkeeper. He gets too much life with his great hatch. He gets too much life with his great hatch. But I think my plan for now... Anti-draws very, very too many cards here. Too many cards for my taste. Too many cards for my taste. So, he has three lands open. Looks like he has the Amber Cleave here. We block this one. Of course he has the Amber Cleave here. Always have it. Always have it. So at least I blocked the right one. At least I blocked the right one. Okay, we get our Maya Triton out here. That is real good. We get some life back, mill ourselves a little bit. That would have been nice in my hand. So, now we pay three here. Sack the Scorpion. Get a little life back. Get ourselves a Lurus. Get the Scorpion back on the field. Another Edgar. Another Edgar. He can get in for some damage here. Oh, the scavenging ooze. I don't like to see that. We have a Polokranos in our graveyard. We have a Polokranos in our graveyard. Well, I need to block this. He will get in for 14 plus 4. That's 18. And block this here. So... Let me count. <coughs> that is 4 damage. That is 14 damage. That is 22 damage. Uh, 
I will block here. I will block here. Didn't draw our kill spells, which is very sad. Which is very sad. That was no good. That was no good. Yup, gets rid of the Pulokranos. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye. You have done real nice. You have done real nice. We get a Gary here. Little too late. Little too late. If we put him on the field, we're still pretty dead. And this one will have six what what counters. Which is still a little too late. Which is still a little too late. Even if we get the four life back here with the Gary. If this was a 6-6 six, six, we could have fathered. But we couldn't. We couldn't. Let's check the Grey Merchant. See what we can draw. A inscription. Well, Gruul is stronger than Golgari. Good game, opponent. Good game. Great hench. Broke our neck here. Say goodbye. 1-1 one, one in ranked. Let's do one more. Okay, last game. We almost got our engine running with the uh, Fiend Artisan and the Luris, but Golgari against Gruul. Gruul is just stronger. I go first and I have only two lands, but I have a village rights. But no black land. Okay. Okay. Good thing I double checked. I need to mulligan this. Well. Okay. Let's hope that we draw into something good. Because those are a lot of lands. One Academe's Awakening can go. Get our Scorpion out. If we are against a mill deck, at least we can get something back. This hand looks terrible. I should have milled down to 5. Should have milled down to 5. Well, we will see. Maybe I can make the epic comeback of all times. So, we're up against a control deck. And we draw another land. And we draw another land. Let's get a green out. Attack in for 1. Why not? Why not? So, are we gonna get flooded here? Are we going to get flooded here? The village rides. Worst case, we can use that to draw into some cards, make two damage and see if we can get something good here. Can we get something good? We'll sack this creature. Are you countering this? Are you countering this? No, you are not. Maya Trident's also real nice. And there you go. That is good. That is something that I want. Mill myself for two. Ooh, two cards that I would like to see in my hand. But good thing we have the Call of the Death Dweller. He gets a Brazen Borrower out. Okay. Let's see if he's a Dr. Counterspell. Let's see if he's Dr. Counterspell. We will try to get those two back on the field. Are you countering this? No, you're not. No, you are not. So I put a Death Touch counter and a Menace counter on this. And get a land out. Okay, this looks good. This looks good. He was not countering it. He did not counter it. I would like to have another land out here for the Heartless Act. Staggering Insight. We can take care of that. We can take care of that. We have Loris here. Very nice. So we will try to destroy this. Do you have a counter spell for that? Do you have a counter spell? 
he does have a counter spell for that. Well, in that case, we get our Loris out and an Agadim's Awakening tapped and snack in for some damage. And next turn, we can uh, use the Grey Merchant, sack it, and get a Grey Merchant. Okay, that is very nice. That is very nice. Gets four life back here and draws a card. But we will get some life back too. Another Grey Merchant. Exactly what I want to see here. Exactly what I want to see here. He gets in for seven. Back on 12. And a Dream Thrawler. Oh, that is just bad. That is just bad. The Dream Thrawler is real bad. So. But we get another merchant on the field. That is not too bad. Do you have anything in your graveyard? No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. That is our plan here. Get 8 life. Get in with the Fiend Artisan and the Meyer Triton. If he wants to block those. He wants. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So our plan is still well alive. He will be back on 10. He will be back on 10. But we can sack with the Fiend Artisan, the Grey Merchant. He draws some cards here. This is exciting. This is freaking exciting. We get a Temple of Melody here. Not really what we want. So we're on six lands. So we pay five. Is this enough? Yes, it is. It is. We sack our Scorpion. Get that third Grey Merchant out. And that's exactly lethal. We did it. We did it. Can you get life back now? Can you? No, you can't. We did it. Yes, the combo worked. The combo worked. Yes. Very nice. Very freaking nice. Golgari, baby. Golgari. Oh, boy, did we have fun with this deck. I absolutely did. That last game was crazy. Crazy. Did I promise too much? No, I did not. No, I did not. I can't say so much. So, I hope you liked the deck. I hope you liked the video. And if you made it this far, well, you obviously like what I am doing. I am very grateful for each and every one of you who subscribed, who leaves comments down there. It's really nice for me seeing that what I do is touching some people, even if it's not a million, even if it was just one person who had fun, I would still be doing this. So, this has been three fine weeks. Will I take a break? Never. Never will I take a break. So, this is Golgari Devotion. This was MTG Malone. I'm Matches Malone and I will see you all tomorrow.